the situation in uh, uh, in pakistan with respect to uh, farmers and agriculture is uh, as as you know uh, in in both our countries india pakistan is not very good particularly in pakistan where uh, most of the land owned by the land owners land lots and uh, around uh, you know more than 50% uh, land owned by only um, Four to seven percent, uh, uh, you know, big land lots, and ninety-eight percent, around ninety-eight percent, are small and landless farmers, and those small farmers produce food for us, and not just in uh, Pakistan but ar around the globe, uh, more than seventy percent food produced by the small farmers, and those very farmers have not been heard in any policy making uh, uh, process. Uh, is in particularly in in this uh, rio plus uh, you know uh, post 2015 uh, initiative uh, as you can hardly see any farmer organization and farmers in in the negotiation and in the i have been also uh, participating the preparatory meeting before rio plus 20 uh, on and sit in the farmer major groups and i i can see that there are no real uh, farmer voices uh, there so instead of uh, uh, enabling them to uh, able to participate in such kind of very important uh, policy initiative uh, the role of corporations and uh, market have been dominated uh, more than 50% of pakistani lives in uh, below poverty line and uh, of course is tied to food uh, uh, acute hunger is there and less uh, food access is there in such kind of situation only the the major policy change is a land reform genuine agrarian land reform can bring a substantive change for majority of pakistani farmers and rural communities but it seems that uh, uh, neither the um, national government of pakistan nor the international agencies or these kind of process uh, force or enable uh, small farmers to or landless farmers to access uh, to their land particularly the women's uh, women's have not been uh, heard at all particularly the women farmers uh, those who have been responsible for agriculture should own the land particularly the women's this is in in this uh, process uh, if you read the, this document uh, particularly with the eye of the farmer if you are a small farmer you are getting nothing out of this uh, process uh, instead the market domination have been enforced and investment and new technologies uh, technologies which is uh, harmful to environment which is harmful for human health which is harmful for in, uh, you know uh, the soil uh, has been propagated in this document particularly the genetically modified organism instead of uh, the causes which has been uh, uh, reasons for this climate crisis or overall the crisis the same policy mechanism have been enforced where i don't think that we are going to have a, a clean environment and and pollution less in, in environment uh, because industrialization and more technology enforce in enforcement will bring you know uh, such kind of uh, situation where we are now and in my personal opinion it will further you know intensify the situation rather than uh, the being a solution uh, for instance uh, the the suggestion of uh, climate resilient varieties and you know uh, adoption uh, is what does it mean is it, it mean that uh, uh, the new area of market the new area for corporations uh, the new renewable technology the maize and uh, sugar canes has been used for renewable energy uh, what we will have to eat 
if all uh, the food crops will go for energy production so where will we grow food uh, particularly wheat so this this is this is a broad uh, uh, spectrum in which you can say that uh, nothing is there uh, for small farmers especially and in this situation if such policies will implement and initiated uh, more hunger and climate crisis will be occur you know if our governments are uh, you know supposed to be uh, pro pharma and pro people then we are not you know been sitting here and talking uh, for uh, the rights of our farmer um, for instance in pakistan the government uh, you know announced a agriculture policy and the seed policy which is uh, facilitating multinational corporations uh, they just recently in pakistan we uh, last month we passed a seed act uh, 2015 which allow uh, multinational corporation particularly monsanto the us based monsanto uh, to take over our food and agriculture in particularly in seed sector now the corporations can have access and control over our germplasm and uh, over our uh, you know collective collective resources of uh, seed uh, and the farmer will be punished if they will use uh, unauthorized seed Uh, if if farmer can't sell their seed, uh, the small farmer, what they other uh, is is there any other option for them to do something else for their livelihood? Uh, the agriculture is only uh, profession for them, and uh, if the seed, they don't take uh, grain seed like this, you know, very typical technical uh, uh, perspective. Uh, they they grow a crop and they take some for seed and they sell some for as a grain but if they sell it will be a punishable act after this act so they will be punished uh, till 2 years and 2 200000 rupees will be uh, you know uh, plenty so in such kind of situation where the government is also facilitating the corporations and the commodification of natural resources particularly the seed and with under the trips agreement it's it's is uh, corporatization of agriculture and for us seed is belong to farmers uh, it is it is the farmer who save and uh, regenerate since centuries uh, the seed and just with some manipulation with seed uh you just can't claim that seed is yours it's a god gifted uh natural resource which uh, which has its own quality to reproduce itself each year you, you can't do uh, you you don't need to do extra effort and uh, scientific uh, you know apply scientific methods and uh, this this very uh, right of farmer on all kind of productive resources particularly the seed uh, has been neglected by pakistani government under the influence of the corporate sector in in pakistan uh, so in such situation where the farmer rights have been neglected uh, only solution is uh, lies in the people's movement uh, whatever the global policies and the national policies are because the ruling elite Um, wherever they are uh, regardless of in each country uh, they they serve the corporate interest and and the only solution and the options for us especially the farming community uh, organize and mobilize themselves and stood up for their rights and only the mass based mobilization can uh, bring some positive and substantial uh, change in their life uh, more than half Uh, of the work in agriculture sector done by uh, i would say 70% of the agriculture work done by the women and it's it's an irony that uh, they own nothing but they do a lot uh as you know pakistani society uh, organizing women is is a very difficult issue uh 
as there are uh, not much good uh, uh, example of women resistance particularly from the farming community but uh, in few stances you can see women coming out and uh, voicing uh, raising their voice against uh, exploitation for instance in, in Ukara movement where the farmers stood up for their rights and and uh, and raise a slogan called Malki Amoth if we will get the land or we will die so women had played a, a vital role very significant and deriving force women women are the deriving force of that uh, movement and also in 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 other uh, struggle there are women but uh, not much uh, or it's it, it's need a political uh, training and and education and uh, overall the uh, pakistani society is uh, in such a you know set up in such a way where women are not been uh, uh, promoted as a leaders uh, as a as one who uh, take leads uh, not much but but there are but a lot of a lot of uh, work need to be done in in term of women participation uh, in farmers movement my message would be don't play with us uh, in the name of sustainable development whatever they are uh, doing is against sustainable development uh, there is a very clear cut line you can't have uh, um, contradictions at one hand you are saying that people ha can have food uh, uh, people don't uh, face hunger and there should not be poverty but on the other hand there the there are such policies which enforce that hunger and uh, uh, poverty um, when the IMF and WTO policies have been implement, implemented in our parts of the world uh, millions of the farmers been forced to uh, evicted from their uh, thousand year long uh, profession agriculture and people have been uh, you know displaced from their jobs by the IMF condition conditionalities so what kind of uh, you know policy arena you are proposing it's it's just uh, uh, you know playing with with us and I, I I just have one message don't play with us uh, the people are uh, very wise and people and people knows what is going on and I have uh, faith that uh, unless we will be organized and mobilize ourselves on a mass basis uh, they are going to play with us continue to play with us so it's time to say enough is enough and they should not play with us